it's Lauren from Wearing History. I have another tutorial for 135, the two-piece dress and cape. This can, is a blouse, a skirt, and a cape. And for this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the shoulder treatment and the sleeve because it looks like it would be set as in a normal sleeve. However, it has a very different type of sleeve setting. I always make these tutorials thinking that they're going to be for one specific pattern and then later on in my journey I find another vintage pattern that does a similar type of thing. So it's very likely that although this tutorial is made for this E135 pattern that you may see it in other 1930s sewing later on. Now what I've done for this tutorial because I'm not currently making one for myself is I've printed out in half scale off of my regular e-pattern sheets. You're going to be working with this in full scale. So you are going to need your front piece, your back piece cut on the fold, and you're going to need your sleeve and the facing piece. In the original pattern in the 1930s, it didn't have this facing piece. I give instructions that were in the original period pattern for how to cut your own. So go ahead and do that if you prefer to use that instead of the one supplemented for you. Um, it's, it doesn't really matter either way. It's if you wanna go with the authentic period way of making it versus the little sh shortcuts that are included in this pattern. For example, we gave the back facing down here that you would have had to cut in the period. I gave this facing piece for the sleeve and I believe I gave the belt and the waist tape stay length. Those all were not originally included. And when you get the earlier, earlier in the vintage patterns, you would see that they would have to supplement a lot more things because they assumed that you had a certain level of sewing knowledge. Now I did rate this as an advanced pattern just because the sleeve kind of threw me off a little bit. And the earlier you get, like I said, in vintage sewing patterns, the more tricky the construction can be. So although you might be able to walk through this as an intermediate sewist, you really should probably watch these videos and make a mock-up before you commit to your final fabric because I would hate for you to make this out of awesome fabric and then decide that it's a little outside your skill level. Now, I really encourage everybody to keep growing with sewing, so if you feel like taking the challenge, then go for it. That's why these videos are here. I believe this is the only the second of two tutorials I'll be making for this particular pattern. Before this, we talked about the skirt pleat. So go ahead and watch that if you get stuck on the pleat. Otherwise, I think the rest of this pattern is pretty straightforward. You don't really need to know about facings because they're just your normal facing type of thing. So when you get started, make sure you cut this out of muslin or another type of fabric you want to use for your mock-up. I've just used muslin since I'm doing it half scale. It takes very little to cut this pattern. You want to go ahead and mark all of your markings on your muslin just like you would on your final fabric. However, if it's a mock-up, you don't really have to worry about the markings coming off in the wash like you would with a final garment. So I've just used Sharpie on mine, so that will show me where things need to be. For example, this is the back blouse. It's cut on the fold. I marked my, um, my dart with Sharpie and I marked the shoulder. The shoulder is super important to mark on this pattern. You really need to mark this shoulder line. That's where your sleeve is going to attach to. You're not attaching the sleeve in the armhole like with a traditional blouse or a traditional jacket. You are going to be marking um, and setting your sleeve at that inside line. The reason is this pattern has like a flange, an epaulette that comes out. That's cut in one piece with the whole blouse. So this piece and this piece are connected. In more modern sewing, if you have a little flange or a thing that comes out at the end, it's usually a separate piece. However, this is the 1930s. They are very experimental with cut. Things were very different than they were 10 or 20 years beforehand. So this might just be a little odd bit of fashion history that kind of got forgotten, or it could be something that we could find in later patterns. We just don't really know yet, right? This is the first time I've come across it, so it threw me, might throw you, but I will explain it so you can understand. So you're going to have these lines on your back piece. You're going to have these lines on your front piece. On my front, I went ahead and marked all of my buttonholes, all of my like, I didn't mark the pocket because that's not really important for this tutorial. I marked my um, darts 
so that we can take a look at it as it will be finished. You're gonna to wanna to cut your sleeve. When you cut your sleeve, be sure to mark which is the front and the back of the sleeve. Since this isn't set in an armhole, there aren't notches like there usually are to distinguish the front and the back. So instead we have double dots for the back, single dot for the front. So I uh, actually just clipped in on mine double notches for the back instead of marking circles. You can use whatever works for you. On my pattern, it is half scale, so I'm doing one quarter inch seam allowance. You are going to be using one half inch seam allowance, and it's included in the pattern for you already. I'm gonna show you this flat on the table and explain to you more about this pattern so that you can know what you're looking at, and then I'm going to start stitching so you can see what it will look like when the sleeve's set in a little miniature version. Okay, here are our pattern pieces flat. Uh, you can see what we need to do the darts on the front and on the back waist darts. Those need to get done. Um, there are buttons. It's a double breasted piece. There are single dots here and double dots on the back. I've marked my notches. I've marked the critical points, the end of the dart. I can do all of that. Uh, the most important part is marking this shoulder line. So the shoulder has this line. I'm doing the largest size, so I'm going to be doing it to this line right here. There will be a single dot for the sleeve that goes to the front, and there will be a double dot for the sleeve that goes to the back. Make sure those are marked. On your final one, you'll wanna make sure it's thread marked so that you can see it. On this one, it doesn't really matter. You just use whatever you want to for your mock-up. Now, I apologize because I keep saying blouse and jacket interchangeably because for the longest time, I honestly thought this was a suit. And we can catch a glimpse of the illustration and that shows what you think is a separate piece right here is actually the extended front of the blouse. And that little dot line right there, that's actually uh, the stitches right there. That's the stitch line. So this has a facing on the underside and the sleeve gets detached right at that stitch line right there. So let's look at what we need to do next. I am going to mark my seam allowance on my pieces. I'm going to be using one quarter inch seam allowance. You're going to be using one half because yours are full size. So I need to take out my pins and I'm going to mark it one at a time because my current sewing machine doesn't have a quarter inch foot. So I don't really have a, a guide that will be accurate. And what I'm doing is just with a clear ruler marking with a pencil about where one quarter inch is. You're going to join your underarm seams and your shoulder seams of your blouse. But first, you need to do the darts. So there are side darts in this piece. Double side darts, which is pretty cool. You can mark this after you do your darts if you want to, but I find that to be a little bit bulky. I prefer to mark mine before any of the darts are done. And I did just mark it with dots where the seam is on the shoulder. You can mark a full line and you can uh, thread baste it so it goes through both layers if you're working in a final fabric. The facing piece that you have, um, it will go past this for another seam allowance. So it should be half an inch past the line that you marked. That allows for you to turn under the raw edge of your facing piece, but we'll think about that later. For now, just mark your seam allowance and then please do your darts and do your shoulder and your side seams and press those seams open and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, my front and back have been stitched together. I have done the darts. There's the double darts at the side and the little darts at the bottom of the front here. And then there's release ones at the back, which makes this great little tuck. I did notice when I was stitching this that like a lot of old patterns, the back will need to be eased into the front at the shoulder seam. So give it a little bit of ease so it fits in there. And also this has a tendency to pucker at the side seams so when you do your side. So you might need to clip it a little bit or grade your seam once you've figured out your 
fit. Don't do it until you are sure that it's exactly the fit you want and that will prevent any kind of wrinkles there since this is such a drastic curve on the front and the back. It's not actually a curve at all, it's more like a point. So the next thing that we are going to do is prep our facing piece for the shoulder. This will face from the edge all the way to where the line is that we've marked on the front and the back. So get your facing piece or make it if you decided to go that route. You're going to want to mark the front and the back. On this piece only the back is marked so you can assume that the front is the other side. The back is marked by two circles. So the side that we are going to be sewing is this inside curve and that will fit to the inside curve of the shoulder, but I also want you to mark the outside curve because that will show you how much to turn under for your seam allowance. So go ahead and mark one quarter here and one quarter here and then I'll show you what it's like to pin it to the garment. Okay, I marked my one quarter inch seam allowance. This side attaches to the armhole. This side is the edge of the facing that gets turned under. So you're gonna wanna press this one in first before you start attaching it. If you notice on my piece, this middle section, that's what's gonna be visible from the inside once you get it in place. Don't worry that it gets down to almost nothing here. It's okay. This is just a facing. You're not even gonna to need to worry about it because the sleeve seam will attach and cover up this part here. You may even be able to trim off this lower edge and just have this part. But you can see that the extension of the shoulder isn't very wide. It'll be double this, so it might be one inch or so on the real size one, but it's not a huge flange that comes off the shoulder. It's just a little, little wing, you know. So go ahead and turn that under and we will start pinning it to the garment. Okay, make sure you know where your double dots are because that goes to the back. You're going to put right sides together, okay? And then there, um, the shoulder needs to be up at the top. So where you see like a little bit of a point, that will be up near the shoulder because it has a distinct U shape, right? A little bit of a notch here for a V that's the shoulder. And you see how it matches up perfectly to where the uh, mark is for, the, for where the seam should be. So make sure when you're pinning it that you have that shoulder seam open so that you don't get a lot of bulk right there. It'll be a lot easier when you're working in full scale. If your dots don't exactly match up, don't even worry about it. It's really not a big deal. It's just showing you which is the front and which is the back. The most crucial points of this sleeve are the underarm seam and the shoulder seam. As long as you have those in place, you will be able to ease your sleeve into place. So you need to know when you put your sleeve in where the top of the shoulder is, which is marked by a notch. When you get around here to where it gets really narrow, fold back that seam allowance because you don't want to sew through double layers there of the facing. It'll make it too bulky. It's not supposed to go all the way around, so don't worry if it doesn't. It's not supposed to. You're going to have a little bit like this that doesn't have a facing. It's okay. That's where the sleeve goes. So I'm going to stitch this on my machine all the way around. Then we're going to press the facing towards the inside. And then we're going to baste it to place. But don't worry about that yet. I will show you that in a second. For now, just stitch this facing into place using regular stitches. Once you have this in place, your stitching will be on that edge. It will be turned towards the inside like this. That's what you want. So the seam allowance is enclosed. It's turned under at this edge and it's pressed so that it's like this. Down here at the bottom, you see how it's getting kind of fiddly, right? You are going to want to clip right here at your seam allowance to allow it to turn towards the inside. So you're gonna have to be very careful to not clip too far because you don't want your sleeve to fray. But just that little snip 
will allow it to turn here towards the inside. And the facing does look a little bit long there, so you might want to trim the seam allowance down by half, which for you will be one quarter inch, and that will allow you to sort of roll it on itself and enclose that raw edge. If you ever get to where the facing is narrower than the seam allowance, again, just trim that down to half about. You don't want to go any smaller than one eighth, uh, smaller than one quarter, actually, for my half scale, it's one eighth. You don't really want to go smaller than a quarter because that will make it so that your garment will be more likely to fray as it gets laundered or worn. After you have it where everything looks like it's pretty good. I'm going to snip in this other side. When your facing is turned toward the inside, the underarm sleeve that doesn't have a facing should want to go up. See that? So it's facing up. This is your side seam with your darts. This is where you're going to stitch your sleeve to. And then I'll show you what to do with the rest of it. So after this is rolled on the inside, get your uh, basting. And mine's not going to be perfect because this is just a demo, but make sure it's turned over so that there's no raw edges. And just go ahead and do pretty big basting stitches. You can do this by machine if you want to, but I actually find that it works better by hand because I can feel what the fabric wants to do. You won't get any weird bubbling or wrinkles. So go ahead and base this all by hand and then I'll show you what to do next. We're going to prep our sleeve. To prep your sleeve you are going to want to mark those front and back dots so you can tell which is the front and back sleeve. Usually you have notches. In this case you don't have notches at the sleeve cap other than at the top and that's a very very important notch. Make sure you mark this notch. This notch will match to the shoulder seam. We have notches on the side here and here. If you notice the back has the notches wider set that will ease in to the front notches. This is very very common for old style sleeves to give you more movement at the back of the arm. These dots here they're just from the original period pattern. They mark about where your elbow is. So if you find when you make your mock-up that the gathers are in the wrong place or the ease is in the wrong place, you can move this up or down. And there are two dots here at the bottom. This would be where you attach your buttons for the faux suit look. You can ignore those if you want to. For now, all we need to do is mark one quarter inch seam allowance for mine, one half inch seam allowance for yours at full scale on the underarms and also on the sleeve cap. And then I want you to stitch your underarm seam easing in the fullness between the notches. Press that seam open. Then we will continue with attaching it to the jacket or blouse. Here's my sleeve all finished and turned right side out. I did run some gathering threads right here. It helped me to be able to ease it between the two notches. Everything matched up just fine. I did mark my one quarter inch and what I've done also is run basting stitches across the sleeve cap that will help me to ease the sleeve into the arm. So the gathers, like I say, go towards the back and the double dots go through the back. I have done double knot, double clips on my sleeve. What you're going to want to match are the underarms, which go right Underarms go together, both pressed open. I'll put a pin right there. It's a lot harder working in small scale because the pins seem so much more bulky. And then you can see right there is where the facing starts. So I'm going to pin it. There the facing starts. Right there. I'm going to roll it over to the other side and pin it to where the facing starts. I noticed the front facing is a little bit long, so if you haven't already cut it, you might want to make yours a little bit shorter on the front side. Well, patterns are uh, tricky sometimes, but hopefully these tutorials will help you plan ahead. All right, so that's there. 
that's it. I want you to stitch by machine there to there, making sure that those underarm seams are pressed open. And then we're going to start easing the sleeve into the sleeve cap. So now that the underarm is attached, it should look like this, which means that the whole top is loose and the underarm right there by the side seam is attached by machine. Now the tricky part. You see the notch that's up on the tip top of the shoulder of the sleeve. That's very important. That marks to the shoulder seam right here on the bodice. And it should mark exactly to where you marked your lines from your pattern pieces. The seam line marks to that line, not the cut edge. It's very important. So the seam line is where you would have marked one half inch in from the edge. That point marks to here. Okay, so let's flip it to the inside. I'm gonna go in through the bodice and you can see your facing that you basted. I'm going to grab the easing that I did by machine and pull that string so that it gets smaller. Okay, don't lose track of that notch. There's your notch. Here's that. Let's see. This is the fiddly bit. That notch right there matches to right there. So the fold of the facing matches to the seam line right there. Grab your pen and stick that in place. Now you've got this ease on either side in your sleeve. This part you're going to have to mold over your hand. So hold it in place, wiggle it around, see where it wants to go and just slowly start pinning that ease, distributing it all across. And you will want it to be on the actual seam line. You can go totally slow. It's normal for most of the gathers to be up towards the top of the sleeve. Now, Try to avoid getting a pucker down here. Generally, I start at the top point and then I'll come down here and I'll fiddle with this little bit and then you can ease the, the center portion in. I oh, might have caught it right there. There we go. That's why it was being difficult. Okay. You kind of feel it with your fingers too, where that fold is, but it's a lot easier with your seam allowance marked than it would be otherwise. You would kind of just be eyeballing it. And this is a lot more precise to know exactly where those lines are. And if you um, are doing this in final fabric, a lot of times tailoring, you will thread mark where your seams are and it helps you to keep track of where you are. And basically this is like the dress version of tailoring. So don't be afraid to, afraid to use your thread basting exactly on your seam allowance. You can use chalk, you can use anything that will come out in the wash, but that is very important to know where you're stitching. Just take your time. I know this is not the most exciting part of the video, but hopefully seeing my hands work it will help you see what to do with your own. Keep peeking in the back, smoothing it over the front. Okay, I have it pinned. Now that it's pinned, because mine's so small, I can't really turn it right side out and test it. But you will baste this again by hand to the garment. So what I'm going to do is baste it where the seam line is. Okay, so. You don't need to use tiny stitches, just uh, somewhat large stitches are fine. If you're using a really loosely woven fabric, you may need more stitches to baste it in place as opposed to something like a broad cloth or something that doesn't wiggle. Like if you're using a crepe, this could be really fussy. And I tip my hat to you because crepe can be quite challenging.
Something else you want to keep in mind as you're working is how you're going to finish this seam allowance here on your shoulder. You might find that you need to finish it with some sort of a seam binding that's non-bulky like a rayon before you attach it in just to keep it from raveling um, because there really isn't a way to bind your seams like you would normally with uh, when you attach two seams together. This really is just placed on top of the facing, or sorry, underneath the facing. Okay, so that is basted to place now the golden moment. Did it work? Yes, it did work. So you can see how you've got this really cool flangey bit, epaulette, on your front and then on your back. So what you do next is you can either stitch by hand here for like a decorative, really nice finish, or you can stitch that by machine and have a visible top stitch. Either way is totally fine. If you find the garment's gonna have a lot, a lot, a lot of wear, you might wanna do it by machine. Otherwise, by hand is just fine. And make sure when you're doing this that you pay attention to where you clipped that. If you suspect your fabric might be ravel, you might need to reinforce that a little bit somehow. Maybe like a, a bit of organza or some sort of interfacing, something where that clip was, because you don't want that coming undone. This is one of the most crucial parts of moving the arm. So, uh, stitch that, look at it. When you're done stitching, make sure that your row of stitching grabs both the facing and the sleeve because if it only grabs the sleeve, the facing's gonna try to wing out on you if it gets laundered. So try to go just a little bit inside where that mark was, like maybe if you're working on yours, one eighth inch inside, and that should attach your sleeve right into place. Let me stitch mine and then we'll take a look at it finished. Ta-da, all stitched into place. I just went right on top because this is my sample. Like I said, if you're full size, go right inside of that line. The top stitching looks great. I did notice on my back, I had a little peak right here. Make sure you are very careful with your basting. It's a lot easier if you're not working tiny that all that gets tucked inside that seam. If you have a peekaboo like that, you can rip it out, move it back into place, and then restitch it. So I hope that that really helped you to understand what was going on with this because I know it can be a little bit deceiving from the pattern image itself. But now you know that that line of stitching right there is actually top stitching with the extension out this way for the epaulette. And that's about it. Uh, you can find all my patterns at wearinghistory.clothing. I'm wearing history on Etsy for e-patterns you can download immediately. I have wearinghistoryblog.com and I'm on Instagram as wearinghistory. Thanks very much.